Hello, and welcome back to my Thoughtful Thursdays video channel where we talk about important topics both inside and outside the church. As always, please make sure you are subscribed and turn on your notifications below to see more videos like these in the future. This week has been absolutely crazy for me. It was my first week back in the classroom. Wednesday was my first day with the kids, and today I started doubling up on my grad school classes. Ah! Life is going to be pretty hectic for me for quite a while now. This week we are starting a video series on spiritual practices that everyone can participate in. I say everyone because I recognize that not everyone who watches this video channel will consider themselves a follower of Jesus. In fact, I know many of you who are actively trying to heal from your time with other followers of Jesus. Some of you will consider yourself ex-Christians, some of you might still be a Christian, some of you just don't know what you believe anymore. Now for some of you, faith is no longer a thing that you can even entertain anymore. And I want you to know that wherever you fall on that faith spectrum or lack of faith, I respect you for walking out your life in the way that you have done so. Each of you has walked it out your own individual pathway to get to where you are today. Many of you would say that you are in a better place and stage of life having left faith and religion behind in the past. I bless you in your search to do and find what works best for you. I also bless you to continue to heal where you need healing, to continue to press back against against faith where you need to press back. As a person of faith, it is not a threat to me whether someone has faith or not. I think that we are kind of all in this life together. I think that there are probably lots of things that I can learn from you, just as I think there are probably a few things that I might be able to impart to those around me. Because I don't think any one of us sees with 100% clarity. I think we all need each other. That's part of what makes us human. Now, interestingly enough, I get along way better with my atheist and agnostic friends probably than I do with people who are the most connected and tied to a religious system. Especially in today's very odd religious landscape, I tend to roll my eyes and shrug my shoulders at what a lot of people in faith do and say. It is a confusing time for a lot of people, including myself. However, I am a person of faith, and sometimes I wonder if it wouldn't just be easier if I could just chuck all that religious baggage. I've got quite a bit of it. Wouldn't it be nice to just set aside all of that guilt and shame that we often feel? Wouldn't that be so freeing? In fact, it's tempting. The scientific part of my brain, which is pretty much who I am, has this thought often. Like, what in the heck are you even doing, Kyle? Why do you consider yourself a Christian anymore after watching what so many other Christians are doing? And if I'm honest, there's a really big part of me that wonders that too. Why do I? But I am a person of faith. <laughs> Go figure, isn't that strange? I don't mind living in that tension. I find that faith is a lot like looking at a beautiful piece of artwork. When I am close to the artwork, I can see every brush stroke. I can see the imperfections. I can see where a bristle fell off of the brush and is stuck onto the canvas. I can see the cracking in the paint from age. Artwork close up is imperfect. I know the author, I know their faults and their hangups and their backstory. Nearsightedness, when looking at art, isn't always that helpful. I'm nearsighted, so I feel like I can speak from experience on this one. I can tell you that from being nearsighted, that looking at artwork from afar when you're nearsighted isn't that much fun either. Actually, it's horrible. Everything is blurry. You can't make out any of the details. Now, maybe I don't want to see every individual brush stroke, but I'd like to at least see whether I'm looking at the Mona Lisa or the Scream. Is that too much to ask? Nearsightedness causes me to do all these weird things to try and see the image just right. Maybe if I just hold my head just a certain way. Maybe if I squint my eyes just enough, the blur will just kind of go away. So what do I do if I want to see art from an appropriate distance? Well, I put on my glasses. Sometimes faith for me is like putting on a new lens with which to see things. Now let's think about this analogy a little bit. The glasses, when they're on my face, do nothing to change me. My eyeball is the exact same. The glasses don't do anything to the artwork either. The Mona Lisa in front of me is there whether she's blurry or not. The lenses that I put on serve as a tool to help me see more clearly. They get me far enough away from the painting to not just focus on all the cracks and the stuck bristles that are in the painting. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this before, but sometimes when it all comes together, when the artwork gets filtered through my lens and it enters into my eyeball, my brain can't fathom the beauty. I get goosebumps on the back of my neck. It's like the neck hairs just raise up. There's something in my brain that happens. I am filled with joy. The same thing happens to me when I hear a really beautiful piece of music. For some people, it's a sunrise or a sunset. 
faith for me gives me a lens with which to see the world around me. I wanted to do a short series on spiritual practices or disciplines that everyone can do because whether you have a personal faith in a deity or not, I think there can be something beautiful and powerful about putting on a different set of lenses to see through, even if it's just for a certain amount of time. And today I wanna take a look at the spiritual practice of fasting. Now I want everyone to know that I am not a medical doctor, but I firmly trust them and I want you to trust them as well. Whatever we are talking about today comes from the lens of a spiritual practice and it is not modern medicine. That doesn't mean that they necessarily go against each other. I just want all of you to trust doctors more than you trust me. That's key. We've got way too many people today in society who barely pass chemistry in high school and yet now all of a sudden are experts on non-regulated supplements and oils and it's just amazing to me how they as well sell them. Isn't that great? And they would love for you to sell them as well and be a part of their team. And then you can get your friends to join and their friends can join and then it just kind of makes this beautiful shape. What is that shape? A, a pyramid. I want you to know I'm not peddling anything. I don't sell anything. If I can leave you with anything, please listen to the consensus of modern medicine for your your medical needs. Okay, let's get back to our topic at hand, fasting. That is the choice to give up or forego something or some action for a certain amount of time. Now, most people are familiar with a fasting of food, which means that you can either not eat all foods or certain types of foods for a time period. Now, I want to distinguish this type of fasting that we're talking about from this new trend of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting where you only have a window where you can eat, I suppose could be a spiritual discipline, but it is not in itself a spiritual discipline. In fact, most of my friends that do it do not do anything spiritual with it. The fasting that we are talking about today isn't really a diet. It isn't meant to eat less calories. It isn't so that your body will burn carbs at a better time of the day. Rather, the purpose of fasting is to deny oneself and attempt to orient your thoughts and prayers and energy towards drawing closer to God. Once again, we live in a society of excess. I am truly one of the most gluttonous people that you will ever meet. And I have to admit the fact that my life is pretty good, honestly. I didn't grow up during the depression. Even though I've had rough financial times in the past, rarely did that ever mean that I didn't eat something. I have a job. My wife has a job. We have a house. I have a beautiful ravine. Now, while my life isn't perfect, and I certainly have had my own share of problems, honestly, life has been pretty good to me. Sometimes fasting can serve as a purpose to help get us out of our comfort zone, to remember what it feels like for my body to not feel content, to not feel full all the time, to go to bed hungry from time to time. More than that, I think fasting helps me to realize how much a vice food can become to us and how dependent we are upon it for our mental well-being. It can be a crutch. Now, there's nothing wrong in itself with a crutch. Crutches are great. I love crutches. They help us to be able to walk when we can't. I've got my can of cherry pie filling for emergencies in my pantry just for that very purpose. I know that it's not healthy. Don't you dare look at me like that, Judgey McJudgerson. However, in fasting, there is something powerful and spiritual in denying ourselves of that excess in saying no to things that we maybe want, but we don't need. There's something really powerful in that spiritual practice. That's just one side of the coin. I don't think that asceticism in itself really draws us closer to God. However, fasting provides us with those little reminders throughout the day. When I feel my stomach rumble, I can stop right there where I am. I can pray. I can ask God to come into that moment. Maybe for those of us who are less inclined to pray to a God, we can clear our minds. We can ponder deep thoughts. I'm okay with that. Once again, it's not the fasting that is this magical thing. It is our intentionality in turning this denial into a way to draw closer to the divine. I remember it was my freshman year in college in the dorms at the University of Illinois. It was Lent time, which is the 40-day fast right before Easter. In the Catholic tradition, they give up meat on Fridays, typically. We were in the dining hall, and I remember there were a couple of guys in front of us that were quite animated in their talking, and they were quite loud. And you could tell that they were mad, and they were fired up about something. And then I heard what they were fired up about. One of them turned to their friend and said, I can't believe that it's effing Friday and they are serving effing ribs on Friday during Lent. What the F? Of course, they substituted the word F for another word. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't think that they're tapping into the full potential of this fast. 
Friends, I would love to hear your thoughts and stories on fasting. Feel free to leave me a comment in the comments below to tell me what you've thought about fasting in the past. That's all the time we have for this week. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at prayer. I will see you back here next week, same time, same place.